one who is uh, stuck in the realm of right and wrong, okay, not okay, liking and disliking, will never know the texture of love. Rumi is a lover. So he's talking a language which doesn't belong to right and wrong. Rumi is talking about a field or a realm beyond right and wrong, which if he works up his love, when it becomes intense enough, once in a way he gets to that realm or that field that he's talking about. But for a yogi, that's the realm he is in. Once in a way he comes down to the realm of right and wrong when he has to deal with the world. Otherwise that's where he is. And love is just one of the ways to get there a sweet way, a pleasant way. But the problem with pleasantness is uh, when something gets pleasant, for a lot of people the journey gets pleasant, they'll never make it to the destination. It's unfortunate. It's wonderful if the journey is pleasant. It's the best way, the most intelligent way to get to the destination is making the journey pleasant and beautiful. But unfortunately, most people will not make it to the destination if their journey gets very pleasant. They'll park themselves right there in their pleasantness. Once you start distinguishing between pleasantness and unpleasantness, how can you escape right and wrong? Once you start choosing what is pleasant, what is unpleasant, you cannot escape what is right and what is wrong. So when one talks about a realm or a field or a land, which is beyond right and wrong, it is also beyond acceptance and resistance. It is beyond acceptance and rejection. You can accept and reject. Only when you identify something as good and bad, right and wrong. As long as you're in that realm, you will enjoy likes and dislikes. If you are placed in that which you consider as good, you'll enjoy that. If you are placed in that which you consider as bad, you will suffer that. In this state, this generally, here in this culture, we just dismiss this as rajas. Rajasik means like and dislike pleasantness and unpleasantness, right and wrong, all these things. This state is very important for conducting the affairs of the world. But if you want to rule the inner kingdom, this is no good. If you want to be some kind of a boss, some kind of a king in this world, you must know what's right and wrong. You must know what's good and bad. If you can't discriminate, you cannot rule this world. But if you want to be a king of the inner world, then if you are in this right and wrong, you will never get there. 
that will not be your realm. You can think, you can emote, because thoughts and emotions belong to this. The moment you think, you cannot think beyond right and wrong. You cannot think beyond good and bad. So your thoughts and your emotions belong to this realm of right and wrong. Once you are beyond that and you are in a field of where there is no right and wrong, there is no thought nor is there emotion in this. Oh, is life barren? No thought, no emotion. Is life barren? No. One who knows the the boundless ecstasy of nothingness, for him the taste of thought and emotion is very puny. One who is constantly trapped in thought and emotion, right and wrong, in the dualities of life, because he doesn't know any better and he doesn't know how to get beyond this. He has to celebrate this somehow. He has to elegize this. He has to make this the highest. Most of the world, most of humanity, constantly goes about elegizing as to what is good and what is bad, good qualities, bad qualities. This is what is loved and respected and acknowledged in the world. Simply sitting here, called stupid, no good. Once there is no right and wrong, it is not only that there is no thought and emotion, there is also not much room for action. If action comes, it comes only as a response to what's around. There is… the need for action is completely gone in that person. The need to love or hate is gone in that person. So do not understand being beyond right and wrong is a state of love, no. It is well beyond love. To put it very simply, to put it in a terminology that is hugely corrupted, we can call that yoga, where everything has become one. Love is just an effort to get there. Love could be an escalator, but not the first floor. It is not a higher floor, it is just an escalator. But sometimes, uh, if you are walking in the opposite direction, you could be on an escalator forever and not get anywhere. This happens in the airports, there are moving tracks. If you get onto the opposite one, you can walk forever, not get anywhere. Today people are hugely attached to this kind of moment and that's why treadmills have become so popular. You can walk forever, run forever, not getting anywhere. <laughs> there is music on it, there is video on it, it is also telling you you are getting healthier by the second. <laughs> but you are not getting anywhere. <laughs> I didn't call this love, 
I call this untouchable. Untouchable either means you are unwilling to touch it or you cannot touch it. You are incapable of touching it. There is a land that is beyond right and wrong. When you get to that land and lie there, humans who live for bread and toil to be what they are not will strive to hide their jealousy with mocking talk and the gods will descend to be in the company they wish to be. Once you have reached that land beyond right and wrong, you never have to worry about making a mistake or going wrong. So once you're in that land, you don't have to worry about making a mistake or going wrong. That's when you live with simple abandon, where to other people it seems like you're reckless. <laughs> but there's no way to make a mistake. So why should you be careful? <laughs>